Five star skiller, long range killer, takes on the upper class, at times struggles to hit a five yard pass. Marcus Rashford is one of the most polemic footballers in English football. Now, if you break it down into more detail and compare his game to other elite wing forwards, his short passing consistency is a problem, both in terms of decision making and accuracy. He has the highest amount of passes blocked compared to your Sterling's, Mane's, and Mbappe's. His key passes are getting better but his overall decision-making and balancing of risk versus safety isn't where it should be for a player destined to be world-class. Now, Mbappe has similar numbers in terms of being error-prone with his passing, but if you look at it in a bit more detail, his assists and key pass numbers, goal-creating, shot-creating actions are superior. So that tells me the Frenchman is taking risks, but he's getting more rewards. In contrast, Rashford is not necessarily only making errors when he's being risky, but even messing up the less progressive actions. His expected assists are also very low compared to his peers, as is his key pass success rate. And this means that while he is able to grab a number of assists, it's usually through low percentage plays, such as crossing the ball, rather than those intricate through balls you associate with the likes of a Neymar or a Sancho. If we move on to his goal scoring, XG tells us a lot. Now to the naked eye, he's a player who seems like he's at the center of every goal scoring action or moment for United. But if you look at the actual quality of the chances he has, it's not the same level of his peers. Now, this can be seen as one of two things. Either Rashford doesn't get himself into enough easy goal scoring positions, or he's featuring in a side which isn't well equipped to systematically put chances on a plate for him. Now, I'm leaning towards that particular point of view because I think Rashford does have good movement to the naked eye does seem like compared to the other United players is more likely than not to get himself into a goal scoring position. In terms of his shot taking, Rashford's been accused of taking too many punts at goal and being inefficient with his shooting. There are some truth to these words. He is more likely to shoot from distance and he is less likely to get those shots on target. But on the flip side, he's much more likely than a Sterling or a Sancho to break the deadlock in a situation from distance and taking a risk where the game's going against him, game's going against his team, and he needs to do something completely unorthodox to break that deadlock. And he's got the balls and the courage to do that. So I don't think that should be a stick to beat him with necessarily. Furthermore, if you look at Rashford's goal contributions per game under Oli, let's look at last season. You can't call him inconsistent. He scored 22 goals from 44 appearances, which is on par with what Ronaldo was producing in a United shirt at the same age. Admittedly, however, Ronaldo then kicked on into overdrive in the 2007-2008 season, age 23. He went on to score 42 goals from 49 appearances. And then we know what happened when he went to Real. He scored 50 goals a season plus on a regular basis. I don't think Rashford's got it in him to have that same level of exponential growth, although I do think he can grow as a player. And I think just comparing him to Cristiano, which I've seen a lot of United fans try to do, I don't think it's valid to do it. And I think it's just harsh on him. Marcus to be compared to one of the all-time greats. You need to look at his own personal growth journey as a player. And I think it's unrealistic to expect him to be matching one of the greatest footballers of all time. Now, he is amongst the top 15 to 20% of wide forwards in the current era when it comes to grabbing goals and assists. But the harsh truth is that he hasn't quite kicked on from the previous season. He's on the same level, I would say. And he needs to do more if he wants to become United sort of trailblazer and take them to titles. At the moment, he's at a similar level to a Harvey Barnes in terms of productivity, and he needs to be hitting the levels of a Mo Salah. Now, before we look at Marcus's defensive work, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for weekly content. Check out our blog, our podcast for cutting edge analysis of the salient issues in world football. We've just recently inducted the lawman, Dennis Law, into our Hall of Fame, and we've just penned an in depth piece on him as well. Link to the articles in the description below. Do check it out. You will not be disappointed. Now, in terms of Rashford's defensive work, it has fallen off a cliff in terms of work rate. Now, by way of comparison to 2018-19, he's not putting in as many tackles or pressures. And even someone like Mbappe, who's kind of like a striker who operates wide and gets a free reign at PSG, has better numbers in terms of tackles made. Now, when we compare him to a Mane and a Sterling, there's a big difference in terms of the pressure and the tackles they make to Rashford. You can either argue... It's an Oli instruction to treat him almost as a striker operating wide, a la Mbappe. Or it's a consequence of his back injury, he doesn't want to push himself as hard. But the bottom line is these numbers do need to improve going forward 
into the following seasons. Why? Well, in order to merit being given that much freedom on the pitch from a defensive point of view, your attacking numbers need to be really, really top notch, as in 30 to 40 goals a season. If you're still operating at 20 to 30 goal a season, and you, well, that's being generous, you need to be able to show you're a two-way player that you're contributing elsewhere for the lack of goals. And at the moment, he isn't quite hitting that balance for me. So what is Rashford's best position? Well, we know historically speaking, he was initially used as a striker under Van Gaal. And that's evidenced by the fact that he was made to wear the 39 shirt. Van Gaal had this strange quirk who was like, Every striker needs to wear a number nine in their squad number. And then the game at that stage of Rashford's was more about short, sharp passes, being efficient with it and getting in on goal, almost like a Gabriel Jesus. And then Mourinho came in. We saw what happened with Ibra, Lukaku, and Rashford has turned into a workhorse left winger. Under Oli, he's kind of fallen in between. He sometimes operates as a striker in a two-man partnership and he sometimes plays as a left wing forward. And at times we've seen him on the right as well. My personal belief is his best position is as a second striker because his work rate from a defensive perspective is getting weaker. So he's clearly someone who wants to focus on his match winning and not have to do the hard yards going back. I think he can't be relied upon as a sole number nine because his hold up play isn't good enough and he's not clinical or composed enough in front of goal to warrant that. But in a second striker role in a 3-5-2, for example, there's not as much emphasis on him to score goals, but at the same time, that is what he will be expected to do. Um, there's a lot more freedom, license to roam. Uh, and if he makes errors, not a big problem. You've got the main number nine who's expected to get the 40 goals a season. Um, and then you've got your width coming from the wing backs. So I think that would be his best position for me. Now, before we go, just to mention on his character, I think, yes, while his game is not polished, um, it's a lot more error prone than his peers. But on the flip side, it demonstrates to me that one of Rashford's major strengths is his character. It is Kobe Bryant-like in the way that he's willing to take 100 shots just to score one, as long as it ends up being the defining moment in the match. Some people will criticise that as selfish, egotistical. I see it as courageous. He's a moments player. He's not someone who pays too much attention to doing the right things with the ball time and time again, as you'd expect from a player featuring in a Pep Guardiola system. This leads to more breakdowns in possession, admittedly, and it can be incredibly frustrating to watch as a fan. But at the same time, it means Rashford's less likely to be passive or let a game pass him by, as in just passing the ball backwards or sidewards and abdicate responsibility. He's incredibly purposeful in possession. Contrast that to Martial, who drifts out of games recently and can be made to look very one-dimensional in possession. So Rashford is someone who wants to press the issue. Having said that, one has to admit that most of the top players in history have been able to balance the need to be careful in possession whilst remaining potent, both in terms of goal scoring and assisting. It's rarely an either-or situation with top quality players. Look at Ronaldo Nazario, Cristiano, Kaka, all explosive players. But did you see them give the ball away a lot and take punt, punt shots from distance? Cristiano, yes, but he's backed it up with 50 goals a season. So I think Rashford needs to improve his overall bottom level. So in between these match winning moments, his level sometimes isn't good enough. And that's something he does need to work on. I do see his play becoming more smoother, more refined, but we just need to see how far he can take that going forwards. And I think by having players like Rashford and Bruno who prioritise risk over possession to such an extreme degree to the point where they're lacking balance, United are a team that is more likely to yield control to the opposition. And ultimately, I think this cost them in this year's title race compared to Man City because they sometimes fall behind in games too early because they're under the cosh too often and then they're relying on these magical moments to bring them back to the game and take them to victory. And sometimes on a given day, that moment might not even come or you just won't be able to take advantage of it. That's just human nature. So they need to exercise more control and discipline over themselves and the team as a whole. And that's why for me overall, I don't rate him as highly as an Mbappe at the moment. Um, a player for me who has a slightly better balance between being penetrative and risky with the ball, but unlikely to have those brain farts in possession or run into defenders clumsily. So, hope you find that video useful. Please like, share and subscribe and see you guys again next time. Bye.